Hello anime fans, this is Trixie the Golden Witch. This video was available one week ago for my supporters on Backed.by, Patreon, and Substack. Their contributions make these videos possible so I can't thank them enough. Please enjoy Anime vs. Content. If you've never seen the anime series Shirobako, I highly recommend it, not only because it's one of my favorite anime of all time, but also because it packs a ton of context and commentary about the history of anime production into a fun and digestible package. Some of the parts that have always stuck out to me in particular are when it talks about the old days of the anime industry. Some of the dialogue from the older characters in this show is directly based on real quotes from interviews with older animators, which were conducted by the producer of Shirobako, the president of PA Works. And those quotations to me essentially explain how anime has been possible and what it's going to take to make it continually possible going forward. Anime cannot be taken for granted. The ability to create anime is dependent on there being people who have the knowledge, the inspiration, and the willpower to make their imaginations into something tangible through photography in motion. Plenty of artistic mediums have fully died when nobody was doing them anymore. I can say personally that while I am capable of writing and storyboarding anime, I don't think I have the patience to actually illustrate something decently, much less to do it over and over and create motion. I could not myself create anime, and so I have a thankfulness towards everybody who does it, even if most of them are doing it not really to my benefit at all by making stuff that I don't personally like or care about. Now that would be all well and good if anime was something that people mostly just did for themselves for their own entertainment, but considering how many people are actually betting their lives on these incredibly shaky group projects is cause for some concern, and especially so when even the stuff that comes out really good often comes at the cost of the well-being of the people creating it, who never see the benefits of its success. I always want to be sympathetic to animators and staffers who are struggling under sorry working conditions, but I also understand that in a just world, anime probably wouldn't exist. If we were all collectively like working toward a humanitarian future or even just picking a job with some security for our own future, anime would never make sense as a choice. All of the anime industry is a passion project undertaken by people with the desire to have a place in something that doesn't really have a natural place in this world. But when it came down to like doing the keyframe animation, it, I sat in front of my computer for eight hours straight. When it comes to anime work, the, the pay is per cut, right? Not per yes. hour. For the most part uh, in America, we have hourly rates, which are determined by um, our animation union. For anime, you're paid by the cut, you're not paid by the hour. So a lot of the times in anime, the cuts are like sort of like a flat rate and they can change depending on things like, are there a lot of characters in there? Is there a very complex like background animation? Or oftentimes what I've experienced is the the deadline is so short, that's why they're paying more. That shot I, I just talked about where I spent eight hours on, it was like 10 seconds long at least, but I only got 2,500 yen for that, for that cut. Like I said in my, my video, that's like border, not even borderline, like you're starting to break laws, like labor laws in general. Not that America is any, any better. We also have our like loopholes and how we don't want to pay artists and stuff. There are definitely some people who do it for resume. There are definitely some people who just do it for the clout. I think the unfortunate truth is that we do it because we're so passionate about it. Studios and companies have been very good at using that and exploiting us at the end of the day. And this is just like animation as a whole. Anime is neither something which anyone is entitled to create, nor which anyone is entitled to enjoy. It is entirely made possible and propagated by our capitalist system and our collective love for useless shit. 
Animation isn't exactly a meritocracy in that there's not a ton of money to be made or job security or clout to be gathered, even if you're good at it. But it does necessitate that there is someone capable of doing it in the first place. If you are capable of drawing the things that you need to in the amount of time that you have to do it in, then you can have a job in animation. And the faster that you're able to deliver, the more work you'll be able to take on. If you're good at animation, what you unlock is mostly the chance to do even more animation, which means that it's the kind of career that only really makes sense if animation is the only thing that you're really interested in doing. After my third episode, that's how I ended up getting to work on Lazarus. I was like, oh, I thought only like the high profile people could work on this show. Because it's like a really like the names attached to it are like very big. I got to work on a uh, Buchigiri, which is airing currently as of this recording, which I was like, whoa. I love this character designer because she did the designs for Skate the Infinity. And I love that anime because it's so chaotic. Because of Jujutsu Kaisen, like the name that it has, I ended up working on animes I never thought I'd ever get to work on. Creative media is a crazy trap because there's not only such a huge difference between enjoying media and creating media, but also between creating for the sake of itself and creating because you're trying to make a living off of it. Hayao Miyazaki wrote back in the 1970s criticizing the whole industrialization of anime for how its first 50 years had consisted mostly of independent animators working out of passion, whereas from the end of the 50s onwards, you had studios hiring on a large number of less talented artists who are looking for a job doing something that they like, even if they get paid almost nothing to do it, for the sake of making a bigger project possible and hopefully making bigger money on the back end. As a result, the sort of work I am describing cannot be created without the help of people who are truly willing to go hungry. I'm not talking about people who make experimental animation, but something completely different. I'm talking about those who create animation designed for a wide audience that includes children, the type of animation that cannot be made by a single individual. Commercial animation almost by definition requires group effort. In a way, I think Miyazaki swallowed a large chunk of the industry himself by coming to be so beloved that he could poach any talent he wanted and had every worthwhile animator fighting to reach the top level that is Ghibli. If you look at a breakdown of how every anime studio came to be, the overwhelming majority of them are runoff from existing studios which broke away when enough talent gathered under one roof to start bursting the walls. Everyone at the top of these studios is trying to prove themselves or to get the bigger piece of the pie that they think they deserve, but which they aren't getting at the studio that they started from. They all struck out with ambition to prove something and they got a bunch of other people to believe in them and to gamble their own livelihoods on making something new in defiance of whatever they could have continued doing at their old studio. As awesome and influential stuff keeps getting made and inspiring people, there is always an influx of new attempters to enter the creative arts, and the majority of these people will not have careers therein. Luckily, most people give up when they realize that they aren't very good or that this industry kind of sucks, whereas plenty of much unluckier people realize that they actually are very good and think that being very good is going to make them a lot of money, without actually understanding that Anime doesn't make money when it's good, per se. It makes money when people spend money on it. Money doesn't make sense. Money is connected to emotions in completely different ways to art, and so the relationship between them is nearly impossible to navigate. Everyone investing in the arts is hoping for as much return as humanly possible, but how they go about getting it is different almost every time, and very rarely is just collect money from people on the basis of how good your thing is. Hell. I've got a Patreon, and I could argue that everything I've ever made was equally good by some definition, but the only stuff that I ever make money doing is talking analytically about animated shows. My Patreon will dip if I don't do that. You can't even just make something good and get people to like it and expect them to pay you about it. You have to create some kind of system on the basis of how money is spent that can be connected to and perpetuated somehow by your art. And yes, that can just mean like 
printed on a collectible disc. All of this is to say that the animation industry is entirely propped up by the attempt to find a happy medium between stuff that artists are capable of and interested in making and something on which an audience is going to spend money. Finding that medium is a skill entirely of its own, basically what a producer's job is. And it's totally apart from being able to write, draw, or animate well, and is overwhelmingly the thing that most animation staff rely on the existence of a studio to help them realize. If any of us could draw something entirely by ourselves that we knew could be a massive success and pay our bills forever, there'd be little incentive to join a collective and to split the money any more ways than you have to, as many pornographic animators on Patreon can surely attest to. But most people don't have million dollar ideas or marketing skills, and so they're going to hitch their wagon to somebody whom they believe is capable of those things. A piece of indie filmmaking advice that always stuck with me from Robert Rodriguez is to write around what you have at your disposal. If you have an actor who knows how to do a roundhouse kick and it looks good on camera, find a reason for him to do that in the movie. Anime is founded on a small number of extremely skilled artists coming together and doing all of the stuff that they were best at together as often as they possibly could for the sake of getting to do it even more for the rest of their lives, which many of them have now done. They made their own existence possible by drawing awesome stuff, building a taste for that stuff with an audience, and proving that if they were paid to keep doing it, they would keep drawing attention that their investors could use to draw money from the audience somehow. A lot of anime that gets made today really leaves me wondering who invested in it and how could it possibly have turned a profit? I've read a lot of articles about the 80s OVA boom when a lot of money was getting thrown at these little talent clusters with ambitious ideas that most of the time kind of fizzled out and underperformed and showed mismanagement in their ability to actually realize a project, but also tons of cool, unique stuff got made and some of it turned a profit and built careers and some of it didn't even if it it was good. In the modern day, instead of too much money thrown at talented people whose ideas aren't worth enough, we have tiny sums of money distributed to untalented people to realize ideas that aren't worth anything. I can understand kind of how the money guys are willing to just roll the dice over and over on low investment gambles, but the fact that people sit down and actually make all this crap is always mind-blowing to me. I think often that too many people ideate the creative arts because they seem like a cool or easy kind of work, and they forget that the only reason anyone pays for this stuff is because of how sometimes incredibly talented artists use the medium as an excuse to show off. None of these people needs to know that they are awesome. They could prove that to themselves all day long for their own amusement, but instead they have challenged themselves to see how they could most delight the audience and create the necessity of their own existence in the audience's hearts. If you think that you want to be involved in animation in the arts, I have to ask, do you think you can make yourself a necessity in the eyes of your audience? Do you think you can create continual demand for your work over the course of decades? Are you trying to show off because you know that people stand to gain from seeing what you have to offer, or do you just want people to like you and pay you to exist? Tell me how you feel about the necessity of talent to the existence of anime, and whether you think it's okay for so much content to exist in the media in the comments below. And always remember, anime forever.